Hey, what's up everybody? I gotta be a little quiet. Everyone's sleeping. Only time I get stuff done is when people sleep. <sighs> okay, so Christmas gift. My dad's, one of my dad's Christmas gifts. A lot of you were wondering what in the world I was printing. I printed this live. Um, eh, yeah, this is a box that holds my dad's Christmas gift. I built my dad's Christmas gift. Um, one thing about ABS plastic is it's very, it warps. You see how it warped the bottom? And it got so far and something happened. This was a 40 hour print. Something happened um, and it got snagged and it got offset and it was printing offset so I stopped it. Then I sliced it and I sliced my original drawing and printed the rest of it because I have to have this done in like a day and it takes 40 hours to print. So I'm going to print one of these out of PLA and replace it but for now I got to finish this and give it to him. So in order to put these two back together, I'm not even going to glue them because there's such big cracks in there. Look how bad that is. That I just drilled the back out and put, recessed those mandrels in the back, those threaded mandrels. And I'm just going to bolt this sucker together. So that's what I'm doing. So what is my dad's Christmas gift? You're going to like this. All right. For anybody who has a miter saw, you know, a chop saw, it cuts wood in half, right? And uh, you hook up a vacuum to it, you got to turn on one, then turn on the other. Um, now, some of them have them integrated where the switch trigger turns on the vacuum. Well, you can buy this little box that you plug in your cords for both of your devices, your saw and your vacuum. And when you turn your saw on, it turns your vacuum on automatically. So I got to look, and they're like 50 bucks, somewhere around there. You can find them for cheaper, you can find them more expensive. I thought this cannot be difficult. It's like a load sensing device. You see a load being drawn, turn on another device. It should be simple. Oh, so this is what I came up with. All right. This this is what I came up with. Here's the outlet, okay? One says vac, one says saw. All right. These are separated. You can see I pulled the prong off the middle of the two there, so they're both isolated. So basically, I've got power coming in. All right, I'll draw this circuit out for you later. I got power coming in to the box. It's 120 volt AC. The 120 volt AC runs in here, and believe it or not, this board right here that you see is actually a. Um, it well, it used to be a board on a relay box for a garage door opener or something like that. Um, had it in my scrap bin of electronic parts that I dig through every day. I'm looking for something. So. Let me pull this transformer off here. So, this is the this is the the sensing part of the circuit. Um, if you want to build one of these, I suggest you get one of these doohickeys. What is that? I can't read it from backwards. That's a CSE 187L. Right? That's a current sensing transformer. So it's got one loop, a big loop. You see it right there of just one wire. It just comes uh, in the main board. Can't see it, can you? In the main board, okay, through the current loop, and then back out to the saw plug. That's it. So, what happens is when you draw a load on this, it induces 60 hertz um, sine wave into this side. And depending on how much current you pull, that depends on your wave out. Well, I've got that wave out running over here to a makeshift bridge rectifier resistor capacitor circuit all right and that that plugged into the top of the original board this header right here so what I did is I created the electronics that actually sense what what's going on this is pretty haggard but I did this in like a day I had no time trying to get this finished all right so how does this work this has an LM339 on it all right LM339N all right again I'll draw this up for you but what happens is the voltage gets induced on this coil, goes through here to the bridge rectifier, gets rectified to DC. I turn that DC into a um, voltage signal that my LM339 can read, and basically that's a voltage comparator. So on this board I have the 5 volt regulator, a MOSFET driver that drives this coil right here. It's just a MOSFET, no driver, just a MOSFET and directly feeding out of here with the resistor and then I've got to supply this with tw uh, 24 volts this happens to be a very small tooling transformer that I found in my scrap electronics everything's scrap 
this whole thing's scrapped. I even pulled the LM339 out of the circuit board in my scrap pile. Okay, so um, basically the incoming voltage is being compared with a set voltage by this potentiometer. Okay, this potentiometer goes to this um, um, uh, comparator, voltage comparator, and when it sees a higher voltage than what I have it set at, it turns on this MOSFET, which in turn turns on the relay. Now I had to have 24 volts because it happens that this relay is 24 volts. So I'm using the 24 volts, I'm stepping it down to 5 for the circuit, I'm leaving it at 24 DC through this bridge rectifier. Haggard stuff going on here. That runs my coil. Now here's the fanciest part of it all. By using this capacitor and these resistors together on this sensing circuit, what happens is when you induce a voltage it charges up this capacitor and it's constantly being discharged across these couple of resistors. Okay, And so it um, it charges up. Okay, you, you pull the, the saw trigger, it automatically charges up instantly, turns on the relay, the vacuum turns on. Now what happens is when you when you turn your miter saw off, the capacitor is still charged and it has to reach a threshold of whatever this potentiometer is set at. So it will slowly discharge and slowly discharge through these resistors until it hits the threshold. What does that allow me to do? It gives me an off timer. Okay, so I fire it up, it fires up right away, I let go and this capacitor slowly discharges until it meets this threshold which is about 5 to 10 seconds. Now I put a hole in the front of my box so I can get to this potentiometer and you can actually make the adjustment for where your cutoff is. How long do you want the vacuum to stay on? That's the circuit. I'll draw it up so you can see it. I'm going to hand draw it. It's going to look pretty haggard but you will get the idea. Right now I'm going to put the box together. You can see what it looks like. So, here we go. Let's do some time lapse. Aha! Uh -huh. Check it out. Yes. Cool, huh? Now I'm printing a hook that'll screw on the top of here right now on the printer. I'll show you. But here's what it says. Look how bad that peeled up. ABS has a really bad problem with peeling up like that. And uh, there's ways around it. Uh, but obviously this one just didn't work out. Um, so I'm going to be printing another box with PLA. But I have to give this to him tomorrow. So it has to be done. It's an auto switch box. <clears throat> and actually, that's probably, there we go, probably upside down for you guys. Gary's black box. Merry Christmas. Uh, there you go. Auto switch box. And this side's got built by Russ Grease. If I spelled my own name right. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. Built by. Okay. So now you know. And again, I have those mandrels in the back, so this thing ain't going anywhere. So let me draw the circuit up, and uh, we'll give it a test, but I'll draw the circuit up and let you know what it looks like. Let's plug it in and see what's the minimum load i got to have on it. Here's my cord. Let me go find something big to plug in. All right, I currently have got the saw sitting, or the drill press here. Let's see if it's enough to kick it on. Yep, it's enough to kick it on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to plug something else into the back side so you can see it work. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to turn the... I'm going to get you back further so you can see. There you go. I'm going to turn the drill press on and the light will come on. Okay, and then it'll it'll take a minute and this will shut off after I shut the drill press off. Oh uh, well, I guess if we had a good bulb. Oh, maybe it's just not on. Gotta turn it on for it to come on, don't I? There we go. Now let's try it. Now, because the saw is only drawing a little bit of amperage, it's not charging up the capacitor very much, so the time delay is real short. So here we go again. So basically, the power feed coming in is tied together, except the light is going through a relay and the load sensing transformer is allowing my circuit to detect there's a voltage on the um, little transformer through my circuit back to the relay which turns on my light. So let me get to the switch in here. Let's 
See that inrush current actually charges that capacitor faster. See that? So I don't know if I have a, I might have a long enough screwdriver. We'll see if we can make that adjustment. Actually, I'm going to leave the adjustment alone because I know it works good when I'm pulling 15 amps. I'm only pulling like maybe five here. So there you go. Um, let me draw the circuit up so you can actually see how the uh, circuit functions and you can get an idea in your head of what's actually happening as the current flows through there. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, <clears throat> you're going to have to excuse my terrible drawing. I did want to sit down and draw this up, so I just sketched it. So let me get the camera steady and we'll go over this real quickly. So, your power coming in, you've got your neutral, your hot, and your ground. Your hot's going to go over here to your, um, this is that uh, CSE187L um, current um, it's kind of like a current transducer. It's got that one coil winding, and it goes back out to the outlet. This is your saw. This is your vac. Okay, so it just goes straight to your saw. So when you turn power onto your saw, it induces a uh, voltage right here, and this pickup coil goes through a bridge rectifier. Okay, well actually, let's do the AC. Continue down here to the AC. The AC goes to your transformer. Drops it down to 24 volts, goes through a bridge rectifier, you have a 5 volt regulator, 5 volt regulator feeds your um, your LM339 comparator, okay, then also off the voltage regulator you have a set potentiometer. The set potentiometer gives a voltage reference to the op amp. These pos positive and minus actually might be backwards here, but nonetheless it still works, um, it'll either work the opposite, but you're comparing the 5 volt signal you have here, so this, is, this potentiometer is 10k, and it's between ground and positive voltage so you can set this between 0 and 5 volts so this is seeing a 0 to 5 volt signal um, so you've got your current transducer goes through a bridge rectifier through a resistor and a capacitor this is the time delay circuit right here this also is limit li this also limits the voltage so you don't burn up this coil because you can okay so the voltage then uh, that's also grounded then your positive comes down here and attaches to your comparator so right now if there's no load zero volts if there's a load we have about there's actually quite a bit there's like 15 volts which is like way too much but you can sense stuff anywhere from the zero to five volt range okay so with a load we have about uh, it's actually about 12 volts with the current resistor and capacitor that I have here. So the capacitor and resistor charge up, the op amp turns on with a resistor going to a MOSFET. You put a current limiting resistor in there just in case. I think it's a 46K, or no, 46 ohms. So the output of the comparator goes to a MOSFET driver. The MOSFET's tied to your positive AC voltage, or sorry, positive rectified DC voltage, goes through your relay. Okay, so, um, and then the relay just energizes the hot side to your other outlet. So really quickly, you turn your saw on, a voltage gets induced into this secondary coil because the primary coil gets current flowed through it. The second coil gets current full, uh, flowing through it. The voltage is rectified, charged up a capacitor and resistor, goes to a comparator. It's being compared with a 5 volt regulator that's being stepped down from the 120 volts and rectified. The comparator then turns on the MOSFET. The MOSFET turns the relay on. This is just a, a way of um, amplifying the signal coming out of this IC chip because it, it won't handle the current this relay is going to pull. So the MOSFET turns the relay on. The relay energizes the vacuum. When you release the saw, the capacitor is charged up past the threshold voltage. So your resistor discharges your capacitor. Once this capacitor gets down below a certain voltage, it will shut the MOSFET back off, turn the relay off, and turn the vacuum off. So that's it. Thank you guys very much. R, let's do this big R. R, W, G, R, E, S, E, oh my, E, A, C, H. R, W, G, research. Yeah, I can't spell. 
seriously. See you guys. Peace and love you guys. Let me know if you like this project. And uh, just trying to help you out. Learn something new. Hope you did. See you later. Leave a comment. Peace. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. My dad's going to love it. Yeah. Woo-woo. Bum, bum, bum. Ta-da. That's a cool looking little hook. That goes on to the box. You can see I recessed those little holes so that I haven't tried this yet. But so a, a screw. You can screw these into the wall. And then you've seen these on the back of other things. That one's got some junk in it. It's pretty cool though. You can screw those into the wall and then you can slide these off. So I am just going to attach this right to the back of this box like this. And that's it. That's the auto switch box. You can either screw it in there or you can just hang it on something. Cool beans. See you guys later. Oh, yes. I love it. There it is, the finished product. Da, da, da. What'd you say? Uh, yeah, don't be shy now that I'm filming you. Oh, come on. Speak to them. They like you.